is salt and light with Pastor Randy Mitchell. Jesus said to his disciples, Ye are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Salt and Light confronts the difficult and often controversial issues that affect today's culture. The only hope for this generation is for more people to follow Jesus Christ and for his followers to be salt and light in their community. Pastor Randy will discuss the Bible solutions to help us know what God says about the problems we face today. Salt and Light is a ministry of Temple Baptist Church in Statesville, North Carolina. Here's your host, Pastor Randy Mitchell. Five days away from an evening when most of the world celebrates a holiday known as Halloween. And I want to ask a question. Should a Christian participate in Halloween? And we're going to talk about that here today and give you some compelling reasons why a Christian should not. Now, please don't uh, don't cut us off. Listen to us. We've got some compelling reasons. You at least need to know what the word of God says, as well as some history behind this Halloween um, celebration. Proverbs 18, verse 13 says, he that answereth the matter before he heareth it, it is a folly and shame unto him. Now, when I was a kid, uh, I everyone participated. I grew up in Idaho, and uh, every, I didn't know of anybody that did not participate in Halloween. And it wasn't until later on in life as a teenager that I read a little comic book published by Jack Chick and um, that exposed some of the things about Halloween. So, I, you know, I grew up pretty much ignorant and never even considered that there was anything wrong with it. And the Baptist churches that I grew up in, uh, nobody seemed to have any problem with it, uh, seemed to be apathetic about it. And I remember one time, I think I was in about third grade, and we lived in a uh, city block neighborhood where you could just go from house to house to house. And I remember the probably the most vivid memory of Halloween was when I, I literally filled up a full-size pillowcase with candy. I mean, it was amazing. And then these teenagers... Uh, came by and mugged me and stole my candy from me. And so, I mean, literally, and man, I ran about five blocks back to the house and got another pillowcase and went out and I, you know, barely even, you know, got a little bit in the bottom of it. But, uh, that was really, really, really sad. But listen, folks, please listen to us here today. We're, our intention is not to rain on anybody's parade or, um, you know, cause anybody any problems. But really, we need to take a look at this because our culture just continues to drift further and further away from God. Well, my co-host today is Brother Glenn Coppinger. Brother Glenn, <laughs> thanks for being with us here today. We're laughing because we know that, uh, you know, there are certain subjects that are so accepted in culture that we kind of chuckle knowing that, uh, you know, the way that people are just automatically responding without even listening to what we have to say. So we're going to have some fun today. Amen. Well, I was going to start off by saying happy Halloween, boo. I don't know if that's exactly <laughs> quite appropriate. Yeah. Well, we were even joking about here um, when we do this broadcast that you dress up like Elvis Presley and do your Elvis impersonation. But anyhow, well, folks, listen, um, most uh, most people like myself when I was a kid and most Christians growing up were pretty ignorant about the history and the symbolism of Halloween. To, to me, anyways, it was just about a fun event, dress up, and go get lots of candy. Right. And I think even to most people listening that are planning on participating this coming Tuesday, that's probably really all it is to them as well. Right. And yet, uh, let's consider some things. We, most people, they, they kind of know that this is the devil's holiday, all of the symbolism and the, the kind of spooky things about it. But let's talk a little bit about the history. And I know you have done some research on the history of uh, this holiday. So uh, tell our listeners a little bit about the history of Halloween. Yeah, you know, it's interesting in, in thinking about this. You have Christmas Day. You have Mother's Day, Father's Day. But here we have a celebration of a night. You know, when you mm. think back here, and if you actually go back even before the time of Christ, some three to 400 years before Christ, uh, in an area of, of uh, the world, what would be uh, now like Ireland, 
the United Kingdom, northern France, in that area. Uh, you had some folks called the Celts or the, or the Celtics. And, uh, you know, they had some, some uh, things that they would do. The end of their year would be October 31st. The start of their new year would be November, November 1st. And these Druid priests, they would get together and they would, and really their thought was is that that night, that 31st, that spirit world, the dead would come back, they would walk around, their spirits would be around, uh, things with uh, these big bonfires, all these uh, burning their crops and, and trying to uh, foresee different things into the, the the next upcoming year. And so a lot of it has to do, that's really where this originated at. And then as uh, time goes on, and you know, the, the term Christian gets put on a lot of things, but the, the reality is, is as the Catholic Church moved across Europe, Going from east to west, and as they started uh, getting into these different colonies and these different areas, is as they would bring them into their congregation, how can we keep them lined in there? And the Catholics had something, it was actually in the month of May, where they would actually celebrate their, their the martyrs, which then was expanded to celebrate the saints of the Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. Now, instead of, and then in 1690, one of the popes came along and he said, no, we're going to take this. And we're going to move it to November 1st. So it's called All Saints Day or All Hallows Day. Mm-hmm. And so with that, uh, that same time of year, you had this, um, what would then be that October 31st, that would be All Hallows Eve. And that term really was shortened, Halloween, in, in regards to a conjecture or a conjunction of those two words uh, coming together, rather. And so really, a lot of these things now, you think about Christmas, I, I mentioned that one, even Easter. The world thinks about Christ as a baby at Christmas time. At Easter, they think about Christ and his resurrection. Mm -hmm. But there is no way that the Halloween tradition, celebration, whatever you want to call it, there's no way to Christianize that one. It is still about the dead and death and dying. Well, that's right. I mean, even you talked about... Uh, Christmas and Halloween, or Christmas, excuse me, Christmas and Easter, those holidays actually find their roots, their origins in pagan holidays and right. celebrations. And, but yet the, the, you know, so-called Christianity took and adopted it and kind of scrubbed it up and made it about Christ. And, you know, I'm, I'm, at least you can justify that, that, hey, right. we're celebrating Christ's birth. We're celebrating Christ's resurrection. That's certainly a positive thing. You know, that there's nothing wrong with that. But yet, this particular um, holy day, and that's where the term holiday comes from, is all about evil spirits. And I think we could say beyond any shadow of a doubt that its origins and history find its roots in glorifying the devil and evil spirits and certainly nothing to do with God or Jesus Christ. Right. And that's, again, the justification is always made. I think you already said it is we're just going to go out and have fun and it's just going to be about this fun. And 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 you know it's like you, if you had uh, you know a lot of folks are against drinking and even if they're not against drinking they're against their children drinking at mm-hmm. least until a certain age but if you gave your son or daughter a can of beer and even if it was empty now pretend like you're drinking that uh, you oh no don't do that don't do that but here it's like okay we're gonna just jump right in with all of the goblins and the ghouls and I'm gonna dress up like a Christmas present. That makes it right good, right? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, let me read to you some scripture here because really our opinion is not what matters. What matters is what the Word of God says. And, you know, primarily we're speaking to Christians today. And that's, that's the focus. If you're, if you're a Christian, then Jesus Christ is your Savior. And, you know, we, we should be choosing His side in everything that we do. And there are sides out there, folks. I mean, there is a spiritual battle going on in the unseen realm for the souls of men. And, you know, Jesus said to some religious people of his day, he said, ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So Jesus, uh, in talking about Satan, and he talked about him being a murderer, a liar. The scripture talks about uh, Satan being a deceiver. And when you see all of the different elements of Halloween, you find, you know, the devil, you find ghosts and goblins. That's 
just a different way of saying evil spirits. You've got deception, people dressing up and pretending to be something that they're not. Uh, that's certainly the devil's ploy. But, uh, you know, there's another principle that is written to the New Testament church that's totally relevant to you and I as Christians, and that is what the Apostle Paul, he was dealing with a group of Christians at Corinth, and the Christians at Corinth had come out of very strong paganism. They say that the city of Corinth would be in their day like what we would refer to as, uh, you know, Las Vegas, Sin City. And so Corinth was the Sin City of their culture. And so uh, all these Christians coming out of Corinth, Paul's teaching them the principles of how to live the Christian life. They were saved. But he had to disciple them and tell them, now that you're saved, there are certain things that you need to start doing. There are certain things you need to stop doing. And so they had this dilemma that there was there was meat that they were buying at the marketplace mm -hmm. and eating, and that meat had been sacrificed to other gods. And so the Apostle Paul, you know, just paraphrase, says, hey, it's just meat. Because the gods that they were sacrificed to don't exist, whether it be Zeus or Jupiter or Mercury or Baal or whatever, they're just they're they're made up in men's imaginations. They don't literally exist. And so Paul says it's just meat. If you go to the marketplace and you buy that meat and you don't know what it is, don't worry about it. It's just meat. Mm -hmm. And yet at the same token, he tells them in 1 Corinthians 10 and verse number 20, he says, but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord in the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. So even though Paul's saying, hey, it's no big deal, it's just me. He is saying that the symbolism behind it, these false gods that literally they're sacrificing them to devils. And Paul says, as believers, as Christians, you shouldn't have any fellowship with that. Right. I mean, that's the other side. We, we don't want to have anything to do with the darkness and the death and the deception and the destruction of those devils and what they mean for us. So all of the symbolism of Halloween points toward the devil and glorifying him. Yeah, and a lot of the history, too, when you start looking back at things like bobbing for apples, the carving of pumpkins, again, a lot of those things were in place because of a, of a thought that either they're warding off some sort of an evil spirit, uh, the, the, the wearing of masks, they're hiding their identity mm -hmm. so that maybe these spirits that are walking around won't identify them. Yeah. And uh, so, so, again, a lot of that stuff that still goes on have their roots based on these pagan thoughts and yeah. Beliefs. You know, you mentioned something just a little while ago about they had bonfires. Mm -hmm. And you know what most people don't realize where the, the word bonfire came from, it came from the word bone fire. Mm. And it comes back from when uh, they were, you know, literally uh, burning um, martyring Christians, anybody that mm. believed in Jesus Christ, that they would have a bone fire. They would burn them alive or they would dig up their bones as a desecration to yeah. show, hey, we, we're going to do everything we can to dishonor that believer in Jesus Christ. And that's why they called them bone fires. And over, over time, that term became bonfire. Yeah. And, but that's the root of it. So, so yeah. many things that used to mean something totally different, but that's certainly the symbolism. And unfortunately, Brother Glenn, we've gotten so complacent about these things that we really don't even think about them. And I, I think that the average parent or people listening today, it's like, well, everybody's doing it. So what's the big deal? Mm -hmm. And we don't really think about it. Well, I guarantee you that Jesus Christ, um, he thinks about it. Right. Because when you think about it, um, Halloween is basically celebrating or putting attention on the the number one enemy of Jesus Christ. Right. And, you know, the Bible says here that the princes of this world, that's the devils, the evil spirits that, according to the word of God, they're the ones that put Jesus Christ on the cross. And mm -hmm. sometimes we, we got to sit back and as Christians and say, hey, I'm. I've got a, a a higher calling in life than to just do what everybody else is doing, be what everybody mm -hmm. else is doing. And so many people will say, well, if 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 people think that I'm weird, then I won't be able to reach them for the Lord. Right. 
And, you know, that's really, uh, really not a good mentality to have because where does that ball stop rolling? I mean, <laughs> at some point you gotta, you gotta believe that, that the Holy Spirit is the one that produces the salvation, that there's power in the gospel. And it's not like we win somebody to Christianity on a social level. Right. That takes place in when their soul and at a spiritual level. And I believe that the best way to win people is to not be like them, but to show that, hey, I've got a higher calling in my life, and that is to represent my Savior, Jesus Christ. He's He's first and foremost. It doesn't matter to me what everybody else is doing. Right. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Ephesians 6.12, the Bible says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's right. That's right. You know, what does God say about the spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, Halloween at the center of it, you got the devil, you got goblins and ghosts and darkness and deception, uh, death. I mean, it's just all this, uh, you know, graveyards and stuff like that. But you also have something called witchcraft. Mm -hmm. And, you know, witchcraft is something that God greatly frowns upon. In fact, in Exodus 22, 18, the Lord told his people, thou shalt shall not suffer a witch to live. Mm -hmm. And and I'm I'm not saying that somebody involved in witchcraft that it's God says to us we're supposed to go out and kill them like the Salem witch hunt. That's not what we're saying here folks, but what we are saying is that God reveals to us in his commandments what he thinks of something. So it's not about legalities and, you know, the Old Testament legalistic law. It's about glorifying the Lord and saying, mm -hmm. "Hey God, I you're my God." Jesus, you're my savior. You, you let me know what you think about something and out of loyalty to you, I want to think the same way as you think. Right. And, you know, nothing in the word of God speaks of witchcraft as something positive. <laughs> People today have accepted all of the witchcraft as entertainment. You got Harry Potter and I know that's probably kind of ran its course, but we've talked about that in times past. We've talked about Pokemon and all of the witchcraft and demons behind that. And there's so many things in our culture that people don't even consider that, hey, maybe maybe this dishonors the Lord by participating in it. And uh, yeah. they don't even think that way. And we, we need as believers, we should be thinking that way. As I read through the Old Testament, is there's a lot of things where... The Lord gives instruction to the Jews. Uh, Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 11. When thou art come into the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or consults with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. So all these things are lined up there that the Lord has given them. And where you saw the children of Israel really get messed up is when they would go into a land, and they would just maybe get rid of some of the bad stuff. But then they would keep other parts of that. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, they're off uh, worshiping these other gods of these pagan groups that they've now invaded their land and they've taken over. That's right. The The children of Israel had a very wicked king by the name of Manasseh. And the scripture says uh, that he caused his children to pass through the fire. And it says he observed times. He used enchantments. He used witchcraft and dealt with a familiar spirit and with wizards. And it says he wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Now, here's a king that's participating in all of this. And, and it says it provoked the Lord to anger. And, you know, not only Christian and folks listening, we don't want to provoke the Lord to anger, but more importantly, we need to make sure that in all we do that we are glorifying him. I mean, the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, it says, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Can, can I honestly, some of the things that everybody else is doing, can I honestly say that if I participate partake in that, that I'm actually glorifying the Lord. Um, I, I don't see how that uh, for someone to justify that 
in their mind as no big deal. Uh, I think there's a much deeper problem than just simply celebrating Halloween. That's right. You know, along that those same lines, Revelation 4.11 stands out. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are were created. Are you bringing glory and honor? Are you pleasing to your Savior by the things that are being done? That's right. You know, and some people will say, well, my kids aren't dressing up like, you know, witches and devils and ghosts and goblins and all that. My kids are going to dress up like a fireman or a policeman. And a Christmas present? A Christmas present, exactly. And, and you know, I understand that. And and listen, I'm not saying, I, I would say if you're going to participate, uh, that would certainly be better, okay? But at the same token, I want you to think about this. What if you had a close personal friend, perhaps a neighbor, that was uh, a Jewish person. Yeah. And that maybe they had relatives that were killed in the Holocaust. And what if you decided that, hey, I'm going to celebrate Hitler's birthday mm. and I'm going to fly a Nazi flag. I'm not a Nazi, but I'm going to celebrate his birthday. What do you think that your Jewish friend would think of you? They would consider that, hey, just because you're doing it or somebody else is doing it, what, what is that doing to the emotions, the feelings of your friend? And, you know, there's a lot of people that are very, uh, very sensitive today about hurting people's feelings. I mean, we're getting rid of statues and Confederate flags because we don't want to offend black people. Right. But yet think about this far more than offending your neighbor or a Jewish friend, or a black person. I want you to think about Jesus Christ. And, you know, anything that's giving any kind of attention to the devil and what he represents, you got to consider that the devil is the one that tried to tempt Jesus to sin. He's the one that put Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. He hates Jesus Christ with every fiber of his being, and he will do anything and everything he can to tear down the testimony of Jesus Christ and make people complacent or apathetic about Jesus Christ. He is the sworn enemy, not only of the human race, but of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who loved us, died on the cross for our sins, the one that that uh, our heart should be given to, the most important person in our life should be Jesus Christ. And he's the sworn enemy. Why would we want to do anything that would hurt his feelings? And sometimes we forget that God does have feelings mm -hmm. and that Jesus Christ does have feelings. And we as Christians should strongly consider uh, that particular fact. Well, uh, we are almost out of time here uh, this morning. I hope and trust that we have made some compelling arguments for those of you that are willing to listen and willing to uh, be concerned about this. But Brother Glenn, uh, you're, you're a parent. You've got five children that are all, you're, you're raising them. And I think the biggest problem problem that most Christian parents have is the thought that if I boycott Halloween, then I have this fear that depriving my children of something that everybody else is doing may cause them to resent God, resent them or so forth. And folks, let me say this to you as parents. Why not consider this as a teaching opportunity rather than your child being a victim? Make it a teaching opportunity to instill in your children that as believers in Christ, we don't don't do everything that the world is doing. And so because of that, we have an opportunity to stand up for Jesus Christ. Let's stand for him this Halloween. We appreciate you taking the time to join us at Salt and Light. It is our desire that you experience the joy of following Jesus Christ. He loves you and he died on the cross for your sins. He will give you hope, peace, and eternal life if you will repent of your sins and trust him as your savior. You may see yourself as a good person, but you will never be good enough to deserve heaven. You may see yourself as bad, but you can never be too bad for Jesus to forgive you. You can call upon him to save you this very moment. If you are a born-again Christian, we want to encourage you to obey Christ's command and be salt and light to those around you. We encourage you to find a Bible-believing church that does not compromise or water down the Bible. 
Get involved serving the Lord. If you have a Bible question or a particular issue you would like us to discuss on Salt and Light, visit our website at templebaptistnc.com. Click on the Salt and Light link. Once again, that's templebaptistnc.com. May the Lord bless you. We hope you'll join us again next week.